who here has played a sport? Okay. Who here would play a sport if you knew that the first person to ever try doing it died doing it? If you do, then you have what it takes to be a marathon runner. Mr. Contest Chair, fellow Toastmasters, guess. Marathon running is a mental sport. And when I say mental, I mean marathon runners are crazy. It's okay, I can say that because I am one. And actually, you can say it too, because no marathoner is going to deny being insane. We just own it. Our sport gets its origins from when the Greek messenger Pheidippides ran 26 miles from the city of Marathon all the way to Athens to declare a message of Greek victory in battle. And then he promptly fell down dead from exhaustion. So the first person to ever participate in our sport literally died trying to do it. And then we decided to do it for fun. That's insane. It would be like if your buddy said to you, hey, I've got this great idea for a new sport. It's called Lava Flow Hopscotch. Sunny demos it for you. Surprise, it goes terribly wrong. You know, he dies some horrible death, his face smells soft, his insides combust, whatever. Or actually, maybe he would die first from inhaling the poisonous fumes. I don't know. It's not important. The point is, you're thinking, Joe is a great guy, rest in peace, but I got next on this new game. <laughs> what? No! Yet that's precisely how the minds of humans who run marathons work. No, we're mostly harmless, but it's not a bad idea to be aware of your surroundings and know when you may be in the presence of someone who's a little unstable. Luckily, it's really easy to identify someone who has run a marathon. It's actually the same way you can identify a vegan. I'll tell you. You can also identify a marathoner because we talk a little crazy. If you spot a pack of us in the wild, try to stay at a safe but eavesdroppable distance. You may hear them do things like use wildly preposterous adjectives to describe a 10 mile run, like short or easy. You'll learn it's possible to have very passionate opinions about things like the exact number of milliseconds to hold a stretch, or, you know, the precise balance of electrolytes to consume per ounce of sweat loss, or the best ways to make sure you can poop on race morning. You may hear them talk about calculating their HR max, VO2 max, TJ max, They'll bemoan their overpronations, supinations, IT ban frustrations, mixed in with revelations. Not that they should seek help for their insanity, but rather that this marathon insanity is the help they seek. You see, marathon runners are quite the paradox. Because you have to be crazy to run a marathon, but then the act of running a marathon actually makes you even crazier. So now that you're more crazy, you're even more likely to want to run another one. It's a vicious cycle. Parents, make sure you talk to your kids about marathon running before it's too late. Now, you may have heard of the wall before. It's this point in a marathon about 19 or 20 miles where you run out of energy and smack into this seemingly insurmountable barrier. It happens to even the best marathon runners. But, if you manage to trudge past that, you may encounter a much lesser talked about phenomenon. At about mile 23 of every marathon I've done, I've hit the padded wall. You know, like the kind they give you in those nice places where they give you the white jackets with the really, really long sleeves. Because it's about that time when you start to get loopy, delusional, or on the edge of a nervous breakdown. In my first marathon, I legitimately started bawling around mile 23. Because my running partner had gotten three yards in front of me 
and I was sure she was going to desert me. And, but then she slowed down for me, and then she started to lose it. Now we're running side by side, fervently quoting scripture to each other, and ugly crying the whole time. In another marathon, with my other running partner, right before that fateful 23 mile mark, she goes off on this epic run about who did let the dogs out anyway? Why on earth would they do that? And why does anyone even care about some stupid dogs that some stupid, clearly irresponsible fool let out? I love that one alone. In my last marathon, I was actually feeling like we had it together, mentally strong. We passed a random spectator who was cheering us all on, telling us we could do it and prove the hater is wrong. And I'm thinking, yeah, suck it haters. You think I can't run a marathon? Well, I'm doing it. Then my running partner, in a moment of non-canine escapee questioning level-headedness, interrupted my ridiculous banter with my haters to inform me that actually, she didn't have any haters. In fact, everyone she knows had been really supportive and believed in her that she could do it. And I realized, yeah, me too. That padded wall had got me yet. So you may wonder, what motivates us to keep up this craziness? Is it the physical fitness goals, sense of accomplishment, self-actualization? We're actually in it for the finish line feasts, the snazzy sweat wicking shirts, and shiny hardware to hang around our necks. So feel free to call us crazy and continue to laugh at us, but given our proven ability to beat death, we'll be well prepared for the zombie apocalypse. Mr. Contest Chair.